a list of things that I've noticed that have gotten better in my life since I've stopped gardening. Let's get into it because this shit's fucking wild. I feel like I've been bamboozled my whole fucking life. Well, not my whole life, but since like high school. <laughs> okay, number one, my body looks better. Less bloating, okay? Body is tea. Just like, there's so much less bloating. Why? Because that gets me to number to point number two. I eat so much less, okay? Like, yes, of course, when you're going through the detox phase, like, I'd say the first three to seven days, you're not gonna really feel like eating. Like, just, it don't hit the same, right? Because low-key, when you garden, it helps your appetite go up, you know? And then you get the munchies and all that shit. Well, I noticed that I eat less, and not only do I eat less, some things do not taste the same. Like, the things that I thought that I really liked, I'm like, bruh. I don't like this, which is kind of like, some people might be like, oh, I don't want that. But like low key, you should want that. Our stomach is only the size of our fist. We be overeating. I don't know about you. I be overeating when, when I'm gardening, okay? Like I eat like probably like this and maybe another fist right on top of it. Like three fistfuls of stuff. Like that's not okay. That's not okay. And that's why I was feeling so bloated and shit. And my husband was like, yeah, that's why they say that the garden herb is a weight gaining herb. And I'm like, damn, I low key see that. Also, I crave sweets a lot less. I still like sweets. I still like sweet stuff. My husband, he doesn't crave sweets at all anymore. And I used to always be baking something because we would always want, you know, something sweet later on in the night. No, I have not baked in a while. Also a tip for when you're going through that detox process and your hunger doesn't quite hit the same, every so often you'll get like a craving for something very specific. Eat that thing. You have to eat that thing because that's the only thing that's going to taste good to you during that whole detox phase, okay? So listen to your body. This one's pretty much already a given, but I have way more vivid dreams. Like my dreams are super vivid and I have better dream recall. I do a way better job at like recalling my dreams and just remembering stuff in general. Gardening made my memory so freaking bad. And on top of having childhood trauma that already messes with your memory, gardening just wasn't helping with that. My thoughts are so much more clear. I have a spicy brain, okay? There's a lot of things going on in here all the time. You think I'm just sitting here quietly? No, bitch, I'm having a full on meeting in here, okay? and when I was gardening that shit would intensify now what I did like about gardening is it would really give me these amazing ideas right but after I got that initial amazing idea I would get flooded with just so many more thoughts that would kind of prevent me from carrying out this amazing idea or I'd have to work really hard at keeping myself focused on this amazing idea to carry it out because everything else was just too much chatter okay so my thoughts are a lot more clearer which is crazy because I thought that it was helping but like no it wasn't <laughs> I have less sensory issues I had gotten to a point where I couldn't even shower with the big light on I had to literally turn off that light and put on like my little selenite lamp and that was the only way that I was able to shower without being completely grossed out and f having this weird feeling like I was like sinking into the floor it was so freaking weird but it was a sensory issue nonetheless. My last two things that I've noticed so far since I've stopped gardening, and it hasn't even been a month, y'all. It hasn't even been a month. I stopped on August 26th. It has not been a month yet, but I've already noticed all these things. I'm more open to affection and sex has gotten better, which, yes yes okay so what i realized like i said my sensory issues were intensified right this also meant that like when my husband tried to give me affection i'm just like mm, like oh my god please don't touch me you know i didn't tell him that but that's how i felt and i felt really bad for feeling that way you know but i just i could not i could not deal and after we stopped gardening because we both stopped together which is amazing we both noticed these things okay sex feels way better. I feel so much more receptive to affection because I don't have these heightened sensory issues that come with gardening. So if you made it this far in the video, I'm gonna assume that you're probably thinking about doing this or maybe you already have stopped and you're trying to see if any of your feelings have been validated. But if you are thinking about it, 
just know that it's not going to be possible until you're absolutely sick of your current situation. Okay, so I had to be sick and tired of all the shit that I was dealing with from gardening. Like my chest was starting to feel tight. My thoughts were way too cloudy and it was it was seriously becoming very overwhelming and I was like, I need to stop. The only reason why I knew that gardening was contributing to these things was because I had previously stopped and then started up again, okay? Which I didn't even tell y'all why I even stopped and started. That's a whole other thing, okay? So I'm going to make a part two telling you guys why I even started again after I had already stopped gardening for, I think it was like a month or so. I can't remember how long it was. But I had stopped and I was saying like, okay, I am fully on the sobriety journey. Something really traumatizing happened to me and it made me start again. And that's how I knew that it was the gardening that was contributing to these things because I already experience not doing it and like you know i was starting to see the benefits but then i got back into it because i was traumatized <laughs> part two for that but i hope that this video helped you in some way shape or form and like i said you're not going to stop until you're sick of your shit so if you're not sick of your shit don't feel bad just let this be a seed that i plant into your brain and then when you're sick of it you're gonna be like okay i'm ready i'm ready and that's when you're gonna do it that's when you're gonna commit to the bit I forgot to film the intro, but this is the trauma that caused me to fall off of my sobriety journey. This was back in June. It was just a normal day. My husband, my daughter, and I went outside. We were playing. We had this new toy that we got for her. She was playing on her slide. Everything was great. It was a really great day. So when we went back inside, went about our day, and then in the afternoon, I went to go change my daughter's diaper, and I was like, you know what? I think that we should go play outside again. But after I finished changing her diaper, that thought completely left my mind and I got distracted with other things so we never ended up going outside. So we were in the living room just hanging out and then all of a sudden we heard this loud ass crash and we were like what the hell was that? Like I mean it was loud. My husband grabbed my daughter like we thought it was like a fucking earthquake or something because it was loud. So we look out the window there is a car that is like wrapped around one of the trees that's like literally right outside of our property and we're like what the fuck so we look in the backyard turns out this car done took out like three people's fences the next door neighbor ours and the neighbor next to the next door neighbor and we're like holy shit like what the heck like this dude must have been going so fast everybody's fences was fucked up right so I was literally shook to my fucking core. First of all, this guy was all right, but all he could think about was his car because he was into racing. Clearly, clearly you need to drop it. <laughs> clearly you need to not quit your day job on this shit because you fucking suck. Anyway, he was all concerned about his car, did not give no fuck about the fact that he just went through people's backyards, didn't try to see if he hit anybody because if we would have went outside, like I was thinking, literally, literally, he hit my daughter's slide and he took out that little toy that we were playing with. That shit was outside of our backyard, literally in the tracks of where he had went through. So I was fucking shook. Because I'm so like aware and it's sometimes a curse, I know that all realities are happening at one time. So although I was okay, my husband was okay, and my daughter was okay, I know that there were alternate realities where that did not happen. Either one of us didn't make it or none of us made it you know and that shit really rocked me okay I think that I handled the whole situation a lot better than I would have because a little bit before that happened I just felt called to take a hit of a joint my husband was outside smoking and I was like you know what like I think I should just hit it and I asked my pendulum and it was like yes and I was like I don't know why it's telling me yes but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it and I'm so glad that I did because had that happened and I had not been a little bit up in the sky I feel like it would have really fucked me up okay so after that, I was like, holy shit, you never know when you're going to die. Fuck this sobriety shit. I'm just going to fucking smoke because I could have literally died, right? So I damn near turned into a fucking hedonist. I was just like, okay, we're going to do it all. Not really, but it was just like, I was just going to go balls to the walls or smoking. Although the whole thing was really traumatizing, I still see everything as like a lesson. There is something to be learned here what is the lesson? The lesson is that life is not guaranteed. I know that there are alternate realities or alternate versions of me that did not make it that day or lost one of their loved ones or both because literally all realities exist, right? So I was, I, that shit fucked me up for a little while, but I was like, you know what? 
I can't think about that shit like that. I got to think about it like this. Those versions of me are wishing and hoping and praying that they could trade places with me. And if they could trade places with me, they would fucking live their life. They would live their life so fucking full of love and authenticity. Like they would just, you know, so after that, I was like, you know what? I got to live. I got to live my life because we think that we have all these years guaranteed to us, but we don't. We don't know. There are young people that die all the time, you know? So I was like, fuck that. Like, I need to just live my life. So then that, that got me back into smoking. But then I started smoking again and I started seeing how it was affecting my mind. And my thoughts were really cloudy and there was just way too much going on up here. And I was like, you know what? This was just to show me how much gardening is not helping you know like I feel like I needed that bit of a sobriety break before I started again for me like my spirit team likes to show me why something benefits me and how they show me is to have me experience the thing with and without so I can compare because I like seeing patterns so I realized I needed to live but that living didn't necessarily mean that I needed to be high I needed to live and be present and that's when I was like you know what I'm really sick of the the cloudiness that comes with smoking and i want to see what else life has to offer me so that's when i decided to really take my sobriety journey seriously and even got my husband on board and we've both been sober since august 26 and we have greatly seen the benefits that is what happened i was traumatized and it kind of led me into this spiral of like all right we gotta go balls to the wall because you never know when you're gonna die to me realizing that that wasn't really the lesson there. The lesson is to live and to live is to be present fully because life is gonna life and it doesn't matter if you're trying to numb it, it's gonna catch up to you eventually and it's up to you to decide when you wanna stop because uh, like I said in part one, you're not gonna stop until you are sick of your shit and I got to the point where I was sick of it, so.